roots of the rational functions. In order, the root of the rational function is what makes the function zero. So if that function is a fraction, it's the numerator that makes the numerator being zero that makes the whole fraction be zero. And so therefore, we look at the where the numerator is zero to get the roots of the function. So on this example three, we could set x squared plus one equal to zero, and now we're asking what values of x satisfy that, or in other words, what values of x make the numerator zero. So if I keep going here, I get x squared equals minus one. So now we're asking what value of x squared will give us negative one. How about one? One squared. What's one squared? Is it negative one? No. How about negative one? Think about this. We're squaring a number, and we want to get a negative number. Right. But you're right. So there's, there's this um, context of mathematics called imaginary numbers. Okay. So, but since we're graphing on the xy plane, that only deals with real numbers. Real numbers starting at negative infinity to positive infinity. So what real number squared gives a negative? Not, nothing. No answer. None. Um, is it OK if you made x squared plus 1 and you um, expanded it to x plus 3 and x minus 2? It doesn't work. x plus 3 times x minus 2 is not x squared plus 1. X plus, what do you want? X plus 3 times what? X plus 3 and X minus 2. Well, that's X squared. Then you're going to have a center term plus X minus 6. That's what that equals. Yeah, so it, does, it doesn't factor. It doesn't factor. OK, so there's no roots on this one. There's no place where h of x equals 0, because there's no x you can plug into that and get a 0 in the numerator. Make sense? How about this one? Zeros of this. 0. Multiplicity. 1. OK, so the way we treat the numerator and with the factors and the roots and the multiplicities is exactly the same as what we did with the polynomials, and, and likewise when we graph. So when we graph these rational functions, we're going to do the same things we did with polynomials, looking at the numerator to get the zeros, looking at multiplicities to get the behavior near the root. OK, so that's the first thing. The second thing is finding the vertical intercept of each. Same as polynomials. What's the principle behind vertical intercept? Or what's the idea behind vertical intercept? Where the function equals 0. Is that true? Is it right? Where the function equals 0. When you say when the function equals 0, are you talking about output or input? Is the output equals 0 or the input when you say the function equals 0? If you say the function equals 0, you're talking about the output. You're saying the output equals 0. Is that what we want for vertical intercept? No, where the output equals 0, that's our roots. So saying the function equals 0 is saying that the output is 0. and we've, That's what we, we did here. So what's the idea behind the vertical intercept? x equals 0. It's what We're asking what is the output when the input is 0. That's what we're saying here. So what is the output when the input is 0 for this first one? So in other words, we're saying f of 0. Negative 3 halves. Okay. g of 0. It's just 0 h of 0 minus 1 half, k of 0, 0. So make sure you really have a good concept with input and output and the graph of the difference between a root and a vertical intercept. A root are what input values give us 0 for the output. That's roots, or the x-intercepts. Vertical intercept is? That's the y-axis. And along the y-axis, what is always true? What's, what's true along, always along the y-axis? x equals 0. 
So we're asking for what's the output when x equals 0. Where does it cross that vertical axis? Okay, so that's number. So that's, that's the first two things. We got the um, roots and the vertical intercept. Next thing we want is the vertical asymptotes. And so I'm just going to, so I can keep my functions there, I'm going to change this. And we saw on Friday and in your reading, the vertical asymptotes occur where? Where the denominator is zero. When you get the denominator in the zero, is zero, that's when your function gets really large positive or negative. So vertical asymptote for f of x. x equals negative 2. What's the multiplicity of that? Multiplicity of 1 will mean that on one side of the asymptote will go up and the other side will go down. So they'll do opposite. If the multiplicity is odd, like this one, this is what we'll see mostly these. When the multiplicity is 1, one side will go up, the other side will go down. Okay? Vertical asymptotes here. x equals 1 and x equals 3. Here. 2. So sometimes you need to factor, just like polynomials. This is x plus 2, x minus 2. Vertical asymptotes. What are the multiplicities of those vertical asymptotes? It's the multiplicity of the x equals negative 2 asymptote. No, remember the, the multiplicity is the power of the factor. So there's still 1. So don't let this unfactored form throw you off. The multiplicity has to do with the, the power on the factor. Okay, so if the multiplicity is even, then they then on both sides of the asymptote it either goes up to positive on both sides or down to negative on both sides. Okay, so if it's odd, you get the opposite opposite infinities. If you got even even multiplicity at that asymptote, you, you're going to have the same infinity, either both to positive on both sides or down to negative infinity on both sides. Okay. So that's the third thing. And the last thing is we haven't covered yet, so let's do that now. And it's what we're going to call, uh, no, it's end behavior. Okay, end behavior. Any questions on those three so far? So now end behavior. Here's an example. So n behavior is, what was it based on with uh, polynomials? The leading term, right? So it's, it's still based on the leading term, except that you don't have a leading term with a rational function. Why? Because it's one polynomial divided by another. So you have a polynomial in the numerator, a polynomial in the denominator. So that whole fraction doesn't per se have a, precisely have a leading term. But what we can do is we can, what we can do is for these rational functions, we're going to find what's called, what we're going to call the effective leading term. So in effect, what's the leading term of that whole ratio? So, so there, isn't, there isn't really a leading term, but in effect there is a leading term. And so if we can find that, what we're going to call the effective leading term, then we're gonna then we're gonna treat the end behavior the same way. In fact, we're gonna get it, uh, do it even better this time. All right. So to get the effective leading term, well, we look at the leading term in the numerator. So the effective leading term 
for this example, what's the leading term in the numerator? 2x squared. So that will govern when x gets very, very large. The numerator will basically be governed by 2x squared. When x gets very, very large, what will the denominator virtually become? x cubed, right? So the leading term of the denominator. So the effective leading term then is what you get when you simplify the ratio of the leading terms, which is what? 2 over x. So now we, this is our effective leading term. Is that <coughs> output or input? Is that like a y value or an x value? It's output, right? It's like y. So what we're saying is as x gets very, very large positive, this rational function will get closer and closer to this function. And as x gets very, very large negative, similarly, the, the rational function that I've said over there will get closer and closer to this. So way out at the ends, our, our function, this rational function, will be a lot like 2 over x. And the, the further you get away from the middle, the closer it'll get to that. Question over here. So the same way that we found the leading term for polynomials. So here's our polynomial. How do we find the leading term of that? In the factored form. Remember doing that? Remember we take the highest contribution from each factor. So do you see it? Yeah. Well, you know, you, you multiply the... The highest contribution here is x squared, and the highest contribution. So it's like if you were to multiply this out, what would the leading term be? Yeah, if you were to multiply this out, what would the leading term be? You'd have x squared, and x, those two multiplied would be your, be your leading term. Is there a question over here? So it says 2 over x, does that just mean you're going to get really, really close to the x value? Right, so that's what we're going to talk about. So as x goes to, as x gets very, very large positive, what does this do? It's getting closer and closer to 0. 2 over, the bigger that you make that number in the denominator, that fraction will get closer and closer to 0. Same with this. If you get a very, very large negative, it'll also approach 0. So this is our end behavior. And so getting closer and closer to y equals 0 means what? Does it mean it's going to go up like this? Down like this? Yeah, so y, getting closer and closer to y equals 0 means getting closer and closer to y equals 0, or getting closer and closer to the x-axis. Okay, and we know it will be positive. For positive values, this will be positive, and for large negative values, this will be negative, but still getting closer and closer to 0. So the effective leading term is 2 over x, which gives us an end behavior like 2 over x, which gets really close to y equals 0 at both ends. OK. So let's graph. So let's put it all together now. So what was the first thing we said? Zeros. Zeros of this function. How would you find the zeros of this function? Anybody? Set so the numerator equal to 0. 2x squared plus 7 equals 0. What's that? Nope, that's the vertical intercept. We're talking about the roots. We want to know when is the output of the function 0. We want to know when y values are equal to 0. So we're, we want the numerator to be 0. And that makes the function equal to 0. Doesn't have any, right? This is one of this. So it'd be like saying 2x squared is negative 7. Can't do it. So there's no roots. 
Our first step, no roots. Okay, I'm going to take everything off here. So here, here's the overall for rational functions. So for this one up here, roots, none. Okay? Vertical intercept. Anybody got it? 7 over 4. Vertical intercept is when x equals 0. So we'll have the point 0, 7 fourths. Which is almost 2. Okay? So there's a vertical intercept. Nowhere will this graph cross the x-axis because we have no roots. But we do, it will cross the y-axis at 7 fourths. Vertical asymptotes. Vertical asymptotes are at? How many do we have? Three of them. The first one is? One. One. Right, because this could be x minus one, x plus one, x minus four is our denominator. Okay, multiplicities of those vertical asymptotes. They're all one, right? The power on those factors is all one. Okay, so we can sketch in here vertical asymptotes, one, negative one, and four. Okay, so the end behavior we said is going to do this. Get close to zero at both ends. So now we just got to fill in the rest. So we have to remember with the multiplicities of the vertical asymptotes, what will they do? If they're all those multiplicities are one, then at all those asymptotes, they're going to go in opposite directions. Okay? If it's to the first power, it's going to go positive on one side and negative on the other. So they either look like this or like this. Okay? So coming Back from positive infinity, is it going to go up to positive infinity or down to negative? How can you know that? Yeah, there's no see. There's there's it'll ne this graph never crosses the x-axis, so it's only the only choice is. And if the multiplicity is one on this vertical asymptote, then on this side, up to positive or down to negative? Down to negative. And if it never crosses the x-axis here, up to positive or down to negative? Down to negative. So there must be some high point here. We don't know what it is, but there has to be some high point below there. It's going to go through here. So multiplicity is 1. So it'll split. And now this one, down to negative infinity or up to positive? Because? Can't cross the x-axis. No zeros. Multiplicity on this one? It's 1, so coming this way it has to be negative, which makes sense with this because it can't cross anywhere at the root. So you have to put it all together. End behavior, multiplicities at the, vert at the asymptotes, the roots, the vertical intercept. So let's see how it looks. How we did? We'll make red. We did so good, we're right on top of it. What's going on here? There we go. So there's the actual graph. Did pretty good. So what was the question? No, so notice we had to, we used the end behavior and the roots to know which side it was. You gotta use you gotta you gotta use the roots or the fact that there are no roots to know whether it's said so this one for instance. The reason we knew it didn't go down to negative is because if it did it had to cross here and there had to be a root here. Since there's no root, it's gotta go up to positive. What's 
here? I'm not sure. We figured it out. It was it's the the effective leading term. Right here, right here. The end behavior remembers the ends. That's what's called end behavior because it's about the ends of the graph. The right end and the left end. So the right end is when x goes to positive infinity. So that's over here. The left end is when x goes to negative infinity. So that's over here. And so we said that happens when you look at the leading term. So, but a rational function doesn't have a leading term, but we can come up with the effective leading term. So to get the effective leading term, we do the ratio of the two leading terms. So we do 2x squared over x cubed, and we got 2 over x. And that, so 2 over x basically looks like this. So at the ends of our graph, it'll be like this graph, which is get very close to zero positive and very close to zero from the negative side. Does it help? Yeah, and how did, well then, I guess, how did you get the other ones? The ones that, the, the ones that um, I'm like, I'll put everyone to work and then I'll just help you because I just, I just went through that whole thing. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you got to put it all together. Yeah. You got to have the end behavior, the multiplicity, the fact that there are no roots, and then the fact that our multiplicities on these vertical asymptotes are 1, so we know it's got to either do this or this. If the multiplicities are even, then they're going to both go to infinity or both down to negative infinity. But all our multiplicities are 1, so every vertical asymptote it goes opposite infinities. OK, so let me give you some uh, the examples I want you to work on are in worksheets. Page 243, 5B and C. And just since this, these are the only two that we're going to do, use those graphs up above that were originally intended for number 4. Okay, Let's keep them on the same page. So just use those blank graphs up above and do 5B and C. And again, you're going through these four components of the analysis and then you try to put them all together to graph it. Don't put it, don't graph it on your graphing calculator. Try to do it without your graphing calculator the way we did it here. And then I can come around for questions. Give you, this is the homework from Friday, and I was out sick on Friday. And it was um, I've already given it to the grader, so it'll just be one of the ones you drop. Oh, you, you drop? Yeah, so drop some at the end. Okay. So as long as you turn in the rest, it won't affect okay. you.
Yeah, your goal is to make the graph. So do, you're analyzing the whole analysis, all four things, and then try to sketch the graph on the blank axes above. So even better, even better than just up here and down here. It's truly going to be like the graph, all the full tax. Sketch that graph, and then all the ends. It'll approach that graph. So that's even a little better than just saying it's going to be up to the right and down to the left, you see.
Okay, so check what you've done on part B with what, with what I did. And we'll do the graph in a second here. Is this what you did? Make sense? Okay, so let's start, start putting the graph together. Roots, what does that mean for the graph? X equals 3 and negative 3. What does it mean for the graph? Yeah, X intercepts, right? So let's plot a point there, plot a point there. Vertical intercept, what does it mean for the graph? y-axis. So negative 9 fourths, that's pretty close to negative 2. A little bit more than negative 2. Okay? x equals negative 4 is a vertical asymptote. Get that black. So that's like a, an imaginary vertical line. The graph will not cross it. Okay, end behavior. So the end behavior is like the effective leading term is like x. So basically, as x gets very large, positive, and negative, this rational function will get closer and closer to the graph of y equals x. So I'm, just, I'm going to use the graphing calculator to do that. So I'm going to graph y equals x. Hopefully it'll show up with the gray. Yeah, oh, good. Okay. So that's y equals x. So that has to do with end behavior. So what about in here? What about this y equals x in here? Does it matter? Pay attention to it or ignore it? Here. Y equals x in the, in the around here or around the roots. It's just the end behavior. So in the middle, it, we just ignore it in the middle because it's only about x getting really, really large, positive and negative. Okay, so now we're ready to try to sketch this graph. So when x is really, really large, positive, it's going to be close to this end behavior. Okay. What's the next thing it's going to do? Going to the left. It's going to go through the root, right? Okay. And once it goes through, so what's the multiplicity of the root at x equals 3? 1. So what will it do? Just like polynomials. Just go through like a line, right? Next thing it'll do. Y-intercept. Next thing after that. Come through this zero here. So now the question is, we're going to get close to this vertical asymptote. Will it go up to positive? So, sorry. How will it go through that root? What's the multiplicity of negative 3? Multiplicity of x plus 3 is 1. So it'll go through like a line. So if it goes through there, becomes positive, then... Will it go up to positive infinity at this asymptote or down to negative? Positive. Because? Positive because? It would have to cross again to get down to negative, and there's no other root there. If it crosses and gets into positive territory, there's no more roots. It's got to go up to positive infinity. Okay? What is the multiplicity of this asymptote? x plus 4. What does it mean for a behavior near it? Opposite infinities or same infinity? Opposite infinities. That means on this side, it's got to go down to negative infinity. Up on this side, down on this side. Then as we go, x goes to negative infinity, it will get close to? No? Well, yeah, but how? Y equals x. Closer and closer to that, y equals x. So that's putting it all together. Let's see how we did.
Got it? The vertical asymptote is at x equals negative 4. Right? That's our vertical asymptote, x equals negative 4. Other questions? Okay, still got a minute left on the other one. See, see what we can do. So what I'll do is I'm going to just put the information up for each of the four. And then if you want to, if you want to skedaddle, you can. I'll stick around and do the graph. So those who want to stay can stay. But please just wait till I put this information up. So the roots are at x equals 3 and 1. Vertical intercept? 6 fourths. Y equals? Is it negative or positive? Negative 6 fourths. Because you'll get positive in the numerator when you plug 0 in. You'll get a negative in the denominator. OK, vertical asymptotes. 4 and negative 1. And the end behavior, effective end behavior. What's our leading term in the numerator? 2x squared. Leading term in the denominator? Effective leading term. 2. Is that like a y or like an x? That's an output. That's like a y. Okay. So the effective leading term is y equals 2. So in about a minute, I'll do the graph. If you want to go, you're free to go. If you want to stay around, I'll do it. So what it's saying is... We, we did essentially say x is going to get really, really big. And when x gets really, really big, the graph is going to be like y equals 2. Well, it gets very close to 2. And then when x gets very, very large negative, same, 2. Yeah. Uh, do you think I have a question about your math class for next semester? Yeah. Uh, do you think it would be more beneficial for you to take that class over 265? Over oh, yeah, I think so. Yeah. But it's gonna it's gonna be it's gonna be hard work. So just be ready. I mean, okay. But yeah, for sure. All right. So send me an email if you want to be in it with your ID. All right. Yeah. Um, with the homework to make it pass to us. Oh. Okay. Is this it? Yeah, that's it. Okay, we ready? Let's do it. So roots three and one. We good? Okay, y intercept, negative 3 halves, that's negative 1 and a half. Good? Okay, vertical asymptotes, 4 and negative 1. That's 4 and negative 1. Last uh, effective leading term is y equals 2. So in effect, when we get out to the ends, what will this graph be like? <coughs> what would you, how could you characterize that? It'll get really close to this line, y equals 2. So what about this line around here? No. So we, it has nothing. See, this, that, that thing about y equals 2 is the end behavior. It's just at the ends. So what happens in the middle is we disregard this, this gray line. It could go through it. It could be above it. It could be below it. We don't care. The only thing this is for is the end behavior, the right end and the left end. So now we're ready to graph. So way out at the left, so start way out the right. It's going to get very close to this. 
y equals 2. So as we, get, as we go backwards and go closer to this vertical intercept, vertical asymptote, will it go up or down? Why will it go up? Why will it go up and not down? If it goes down, what would have to happen? It would be another root somewhere in here. There's no root there. It's got to go up. What's the multiplicity of this vertical asymptote? One. Therefore? Opposite. Opposite infinities. Therefore, down here. What happens next? Going backwards here. <coughs> and the multiplicity of that zero? One. Goes through like a line. Next thing that happens? It's going to have to go back down through this zero. And how does it go through? Or does it go through? Multiplicity one again, just like our polynomials, will go through. Then next, we go through the y-intercept. Now, as we get as we go to this vertical asymptote, up to positive or down to negative? If it went up, what would have to happen? It'd have to be a zero there. Multiplicity of this vertical asymptote. Also 1. Therefore, opposite, right? So coming this way, it's going to go up to positive infinity. What about the left end? Closer to y equals 2. And never cross again because it only crosses at 1 and 3. See how we did? Our roots were one, three, <laughs> negative one and a half. <coughs> okay, so written work is due Wednesday. <coughs>